Hi guys, it's Chip and Guardian and Chip and Guardian's Adventures. I'm Chip. This is Guardian. There he is. Oh, you have to know so pinky. There you are, Guardian. Right. So today, um, so there's a lot of people who've been going around saying that autistic people, including social workers and care workers, that autistic people can't decorate, can't do anything for ourselves, um, can't live in our own houses, we can't um, sort of be in society and do normal society things, like decorating, stuff like that. I agree to a little bit of that, that we need help, a lot of help and a lot of support to be in society, to do society things. And there's also a lot of my subscribers, a lot of YouTubers, um, who call people like us names, like, you must be dumb, you must be stupid, you must be thick, you're not educated. Uh, I've got an English literature degree and I can't read and write. I had a, what's called a ghostwriter with me and um, she's an, she was an ex-teacher uh, who retired and so she came on board and would read for me and would put it in a way where I could understand it and I passed. I'm also a qualified chef and mechanic. So we can do things. However, when I was small, um, we were treated as bad kids and sent to special schools to do mechanical courses and play games and just put the naughty kids away. That that's that was the we used to get the best six of the bat, the best six um, of the cane. I was every day getting beaten um, by the the headmaster quite a lot actually. And it was because I was bored because I had ADHD. But in the days when I was small, uh, autism was not heard of. It was just, we were bad kids. We were going to grow up, go to prison and all that. I have never broke the law, so <laughs> wrong, right? So anyway, so enough rambling. So um, I've been decorating my house, my gardens and stuff like that for a while. And I've got scars to prove it. And yes, I do need supervising because I am autistic and I know my limits. Um, I have Guardian here to tell me where my blood sugar drops. Um, he's really good. He's a medic dog as well as a service dog. Okay, so therefore he knows if I'm getting pneumonia. He knows if I'm coming down with something. He knows if I'm about to pass out because I'm hypoglycemic. He, he knows. I am not diabetic. I am hypoglycemic. Okay. There's a big difference. A lot of people say, oh, automatically you're diabetic. No. Hypoglycemia is when your blood can't produce enough sugar and for you to absorb sugar. And it always stays low to the point where I crash and burn. Very easy if I don't eat. I also have bowel disease, which means that I can't eat. So I might have catch 22. If I eat, I'm in pain. If I don't eat, I'm not much in pain. Yes, I'm in pain still, but not as much. But then my sugar level drops and I'm in the cold myself. I can't win. But isn't that the autistic life? What can I say? So, um, a few weeks back, I had, I've had i had a load of people die of COVID. That's family, like uncles and aunties. And um, it's been quite a lot of deaths in the last few months of, of COVID. So, because um, they're in the midst of London, it's difficult you know um you've got to go out there's no places to walk you're bumping into everybody else i don't understand when the government says do exercise when london's not an exercise place yet you're packed in like sardines so you know what i mean and um it's so bad and screamy and i couldn't cope um in oxford streets and stuff so i keep away from them areas so me and guardian um have decided I, um, I got down, very down, very quick. I couldn't understand things very well. Um, I had some problems with my care workers, um, were, were being blamed for stuff they never did um, by 
the social worker and my appointee. And anyway, it went all too much for me and it put me into a downward spiral. People know, if you've, if you've ever suffered, not just once, from a panic attack, then you know what I'm talking about. It puts you in a place where it's scary, where you're frightened all the time of the panic attack. And it gets to the point where you're exhausted. Now, most people, I, I went online to look about panic attacks and all I could find was 10 minutes. That's all it lasts is 10 minutes. Mine can last between an hour to eight hours. And I try to do hypnosis. I try to do that, but I've got ADD. So I can't sit still. I can't, my mind can't quiet so it can get in. So I found affirmations are good. Um, if you want to try that, try it. Um, every day before you get up, before you have panic attacks, every day before you go and do something that you know may cause you to creak a panic attack, try to do some affirmations um, about yourself because the brain um, will only take in what you give it. Your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your ears, your thoughts. Right? So, it works hitting this. I'm not going to say to people, yeah, panic attacks are fine, it's controllable. It ain't. Um, one time it came on, all of a sudden I was okay, was taking the garden for a walk. It was quiet, we were on the farm, everything was fine. And then, for some reason, boom, I felt like hell, like, like death would have been better for me. Another thing with panic attacks, people say, you've got a fear of dying in this panic attack no i don't you've got to fear stop breathing that's not my fear so therefore it doesn't i'm not frightened of dying because that's the easy part to me living is the hardest part <laughs> so um it's more frightening for me to live than it is to die because not only because of my conditions but also my autism and the care i receive is it's it sometimes can be dangerous um in the wrong hands if i'm in the wrong hands it can be dangerous, and it has been, where, to the point where I've not been fed, and I, um, they never gave me money to feed, and I ended up nearly dying of starvation. So, guys, I'm telling you, being autistic is hard work. Being normal is hard work, so imagine what it's like for us. But as for going back, this video is the start of, I'm going to show you around, um, I've started stripping the walls. I've burnt myself four times already um, using, I don't know if you can see it, using the um, steamer. Uh, I burnt my face, I burnt my arms. That's just part and partial because I'm not being supervised. So it does that. And I can't wait to twice a week to, to just strip the room. You know what I mean? Um, so. When my care workers come, they work really hard. They they support me. They and even get their hands dirty underneath a car bonnet or in 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 the garden. They they just go beyond what they're supposed to do. To be fair with me, I think I knock her off of them out. To be fair, but that's just me. So yesterday I fell down the ladders, and then people were saying, "Chip, why don't you record your self decorating from start to finish?" how you decorate, the way you decorate, to show people that autistic people can manage, badly but manage, and also, it'll also show that we do need a lot of support, and we need a lot of, like, input, and we do need supervising a lot of the time, but that's not our fault, we didn't ask to be born this way, and for all you lot that are writing down oh you're a retard and stuff like that i did not know what a retard was my care workers would not tell me what people were writing and then i turned around and i said to them this guy i was playing on the xbox and this guy turned around and said what are you retarded and i was like no what did i do wrong and he went what you don't know what you did wrong with halo and i was like no and he said well, you were supposed to crawl and go down here and throw this and do that. And I was like, but that's too many commands. We like it black and white, simple. And there's just too many commands, what you want me to do in this group. Well, then leave. But I'm autistic. I, I need to 
I, I can do some things, so give me something, give, assign something to me that I can do. I can tell you what I can do, and then you can assign one or two to me, but start giving me five or six instructions, I, I'm going to lose. And he went, well, I don't want you on my team. Kick me off. Right? Everyone says, are you unhappy about that, Chip? No. It happens all my life. It's, you know, I think we're more shocked when people know about autism and also know about what we do we're more shocked to be fair um when someone goes oh yeah i know how you feel or like especially a kid comes up and says oh shit yeah i can i get it i get i get it or some stranger comes up and goes i get it i get it it's because you're autistic and it's because you like things black and white it's because the rules are complicated within rules or in rules and rules where you just want a rule, a simple rule, black and white, yes or no. You know, it's like people were saying to me, you can't have the PlayStation and the Xbox, you can only be one or the other. But why? The only difference between the PlayStation and the Xbox, to be honest, is the fact of the way you stream. One, to stream on YouTube, you have to do a whole load of stuff um, buy capture cards, do this, do that, do this, just to get on YouTube. And Twitch is a bit more easier, but what if I don't want to go on Twitch? What if I want to be a YouTuber and go on YouTube? I can't, because it's too complicated. And it's not the, the type of thing my care workers will know what to do. And you can't read instructions. And I can sit all day and watch YouTubers teach me, but it's going to take me months, maybe a year, to learn how to do a basic thing. Where's the PlayStation? It's boom, 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 done. Yeah? So, that's the rant of this video. Like I said, the only difference between the Xbox and the PlayStation is the streaming bit. If Xbox could make it as easy as PlayStation, that would be brilliant for people like me. And the second thing is the fact that I don't know. Um, the the see, I like both games. I like Halo, and I also like like Horizon, and I like God of War and stuff like that. So I don't understand why people want me to choose. I don't understand why they want me to say which is best. Neither of them, both of them, depends on your health as well. If you're overweight or underweight, and you're concentrating on that, you don't eat and drink. Yes, of course, it's going to affect your health. If you're epileptic, it's going to affect your health. If you're healthy and you do weights and stuff, no, it's going to be good for you because you're only good doing it a couple of hours. It depends on you and it depends on your health. All right, so I'm going to see this part and then I'll let you see around and then we'll carry on. So this is what I've been doing. So I've been stripping at the minute. We're going to be using some of this because it's safer than me mixing it myself and ending up everywhere. And then... We're going to fill these holes in, and then we're going to sand them down. And then I've got to take that down. Believe me, that is the most horrific thing to do. It weighs a ton. And I wouldn't recommend getting them, to be fair, unless you were going to keep them there. That's been there five years, so um, I've done that. And then we've just got a strip. There's the stream, and that's burnt me. I've um, unfortunately got all this in the limb room. It should... To be fair, you should move everything out into the middle of your room or away from you because it is dangerous. Because I have to strip this and look, all this is here. So this is what it prompted me to, to start. There's Guardian's water and biscuits. There's Guardian's biscuits and food. Yes, he has that. I've also got ceiling paint, although apparently it doesn't need it because I did it last year, but I'm going to do another coat. Um, so this is the ceiling paint. Okay. Um, Tesco's are doing it at the minute seven pound guys go to Tesco's if you want some ceiling paint for spring now I know most people don't do not um, start decorating till springtime or do a spring clean you might want to just quickly do your ceiling 7.99 Tesco's at the minute um, Alexa what's today's date today is Thursday the 18th of March so it's Thursday the 18th of March 2021. So if you get yourself down to Tesco's, your local Tesco's, they should have 
these in. If you've got a bigger house, get a couple, but it's only seven quid. Okay, and it's the cheapest I've found. And it's just pure white paint. Okay, for walls and ceilings. It's silk. But I think they do have matte as well. Okay, so get, get yourself down to your local Tesco's. Um, that's a bargain. <clears throat> also, um, once it's done, I will show you how much everything costs. And then I will link it in the last part of the video down below. And I will be doing it for cheap. Okay, so not, nothing I do is expensive. I've already obviously got my telly and stuff like that. So, me and Guardian, we'll see you for now, won't we, my son? Hey, we'll see you for now. Say goodbye. You're being lazy. He hates it when I clean. You, you gonna help mummy? Are you gonna help me? Are you? You want your belly tickled? Do you want your belly tickled? That's being lazy. Are you being lazy? Are you being lazy? Oh yeah. Let me see your face. Oh, you're so cute. This is Guardian. Look how huge he is. Look. Right, so this is all this. This is going to be redone. And all this is going to be redone. Now, guys, you know um, if you've got French doors or you've got large windows, it's very hard to find curtains and neck curtains. You probably have to make them yourself, right? Well, these are the French doors. And I'm sick of the plastic. You can't paint it. You know, it stains. You can't do nothing much with it, right? It always looks dirty no matter what you do. So, I've got... This. Can you see it? So, I'm going to put this. This is sticky... Um, what's it called? That sticky... Sable skillet bent stick, sticky stuff, right? The defects, there you go, right? DC fix. And that is going all the way around these French doors. Because the wipeable, the clean, you can do different colours, whatever your room colour is. I want it to look marbly. And then in the middle, I'm going to do a staining on the glass um, with some stuff which I'll show you how to do. But yeah, I'm going to use this, which I got from BM's. So if you go to your main BMs, they're about eight quid for this roll. So it's, it's pretty good, isn't it? Right? Pretty good price. It's huge as well. It stands about three foot. Yeah, about three, four foot tall. Can you see it? So that's not bad for eight quid. Right. So what I'm going to do is strip the rest of this, take that down, move everything out. And then once I do it, I will show you how I'm doing it. And... We'll see you in part two.